When I'm selecting an educational film, the first thing is, will it engage them? Because it's kind of like a little fish hook. You just send it out there, and, and then if they take the bait, then you reel them in for the actual learning of the real content. The best short films for lifelong learning recommended by teachers for teachers. This is Short Films Teachers Love with your host, Richard Lee. And I just, I, I mean, you know, I'm just beginning to think that, that Space Oats isn't the answer. Well, maybe you just weren't meant to write agricultural space tragedies. You've got to write from your heart. Just let people into your dreams. You think so? I do. I really do. Uh, will I see you again? Definitely. Don't worry so much. Just write what you know. That is my favorite one to show, uh, hands down, in terms of, basically, I'll tell them about the theory of write what you know. The, your life is what you know better than anyone else, so therefore when you're putting something on paper, it's going to mean something if it's coming from a, a, an experience, not necessarily like a world that you know, but an experience that you know, and something that's universal, uh, you know, within the human experience. When you're 16, 17 years old, you don't have the life experience to be able to write, you know, an epic space battle that's going to mean anything. Uh, so why don't you guys go and write about something that you really do have experience with like we've had little relationship dramas and we've had um, like yeah sort of health uh, things because teenagers oftentimes you know it, life is kind of tough there are good stories that can come out of you so if you can develop some self-reflection you can really pick up on some of those universal human experiences that everybody knows about and therefore will relate to I guess having a crowd in front of you makes it easier to spread some kind of a message. <laughs> Unless you're me. I don't know what he did to upset them. When one fish turns, they all just go right there. We see that happen with audiences all the time. Stage fright, which is kind of a, a through line of the film in, in that I have stage fright and when I get out in front of a crowd, uh, it's, it's very nerve wracking. So, I mean, that's another thing that I'm really keen on with my students is to say don't be afraid of like if you be yourself then often some of some humor will come through that you're not even aware is there but audiences will really connect with it and there's nothing more rewarding than sitting in a theater full of people who burst out laughing at something that you th like initially were like that's kind of funny uh, but then the humor had been lost because of the editing process and everything, and, and you just gotten so used to it. To see that happen with students' work as well, because we often play student films in front of uh, like a lunchtime crowd in our theater, and to see the students, you know, gasp at jump scares and all that kind of stuff when it's when it's been student work, that's like as rewarding as when it's my film playing at a theater. Yeah, it's really um, great to see. Let, let's look at this next film we recommended. So, Borrowed Time. can do this. Tell me why you chose Borrowed Time. Well, I used to always, because three-act structure, as I, as I said, three-act structure with uh, the Sid Field model of it is, you know, act one, introduce the characters, act two, everything, you know, becomes sort of twisted and turned into a knot, and then uh, in act three there's the resolution, uh, but there's always... But before Act 2, there is uh, an inciting moment, which is just that, that one moment that just turns everything on its head and, and it, t it takes the story in a new direction. And then same thing with Act 3. Inciting moment turns things on its head and goes in a new direction to, to resolve the story. Uh, and I used to teach that in terms of, uh, I'd be like, hands up if you've seen The Lion King. Everyone puts their hand up. The whole thing with that was that I can't show them The Lion King. It would take too long and, and waste valuable time of doing all this other stuff. So um, this year when this movie came out, I saw it and I went, that is the perfect example of three-act structure in short form to, to just sort of immediately illustrate 
here is inciting moment one, here is inciting moment two. Uh, so I've only done this once, but it worked so well. So we, we finished the thing and a, a student puts their hand up and was like, why did we watch that after doing the three act structure thing? You can't cover three acts in a, in a, in a short film. And I was like, aha, uh -huh. well, <laughs> so, uh, and I'm like, I was waiting for that and it reeled them in. Uh, so I was like, cool. So, so I just dragged the, it was on YouTube. So I just dragged the scrubber back to the point where it's very clear that this is inside of my one. Uh, and, uh, I was like, what do you think this is? And then someone's like, that's exactly the same thing that happens in the Lion King. And it's and the going, like, look, <laughs> yeah, we are now, uh, two minutes and I think it was about two minutes 30 into a six minute piece. And I'm just like, that's, yeah, that's you couldn't ask for a better illustration of how three X structure works. And they're like, yeah, but what about the end? I'm like, well, let's have, a, let's have a look through. And so I, I played sort of the last half of it again. I'm like, stop me when we get to the thing. And, um, I had about five hands go up at, at that exact moment. I'm just like, this is brilliant. So yeah, if you are dealing with three X structure, borrowed time, uh, if you can get it. Let's talk about one more film that you've recommended called home. Home is a zombie film. Uh, it's actually directed by a friend of mine, uh, and I was a sound recordist on it. Ah, right. So mm. I can speak from experience when I'm delivering the content. But really, the main reason that I, I show it to them, other than the personal experience, is that it's a really good example of a very low-budget film that comes together very well, tells a very human s story, uh, and has zombies. And so <laughs> uh, basically I've got a, a lot of students uh, – in my current vet interactive digital media class that are into um, horror and gore and all of that kind of stuff that, and and much like yourself I'm not into that stuff in fact I have nightmares if I you know watch anything scarier than Terminator 2 <laughs> so uh, yeah it really it was an entry point for me because I'd worked on it uh, and so if, if students are like, well, how can we make a horror film or something like that? I, I am able to pull this out and say, you know, with not much money and a skeleton crew and fairly minimal cast as well, because you could, you know, with a zombie film, you can reuse the same zombies and keep killing them and stuff like that uh, if you just change the makeup. A couple of shorter questions. Do you have a general rule about what makes film a good educational resource? Gee, let's see. Um, when I okay, when I'm selecting an educational film, uh, the first thing is, will it engage them in relation to what we're learning? That's that's pretty much it because it's kind of like a little fish hook. You just send it out there, and and then if they take the bait, then you reel them in for the actual learning of the real content. Yeah, which is the zombie film works quite well with that because they're like, oh, we get to watch a zombie film, and then then surprise, kids, you're actually learning something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So where do you where, where do you find good shorts? Uh, I tend to just draw everything from my own like experiences. I mean, like the reason I got into film was because I wanted to make another Star Wars or something like that, and I tell the kids that too uh, because they'll often sort of go. Hey, that's what I want to do is go and make the next Star Wars. Uh, so yeah, everything sort of comes from my own experience and my own. And again, that's why I show them the George Lucas thing because that's all about bringing from your own experience and then sort of shaping it in some way to make it work for an audience. Which really, same goes for teaching. When I've found something that's very very useful for me, uh, I don't see why it wouldn't necessarily have a similar impact on on students. Yeah. To listen to the full conversation, join us on SoundCloud, iTunes or Stitcher. For extra notes and community support, join our Facebook group today. This show is a proud member of the Education Podcast Network. Podcasts for educators, podcasts by educators. To learn more, visit edupodcastnetwork.com.